So on this video we are going to be discussing this guy right here and what is amazing about the story is this person discovered lines of computer code in the fundamental equations that describe the universe. Now by code I am talking about binary bits of ones and zeros and it was actually a specific kind of code that is found in computer and web browsers. Now before you write this guy off as just being crazy or messed up in the head he's actually one of the world's top respected physicists here it says uh, his name is james gates and it says here is an american theoretical physicist known for work on supersymmetry supergravity and super string theory he is currently a professor in physics department at the university of maryland college of computer mathematical and natural sciences a university of Mar okay and then here it says further down um on it says served on former president barack obama's council of advisors on science and technology and you've probably seen this guy on a couple of documentaries on the history channel or national geographic now here's a video he was giving with uh, neil degrasse tyson about his discovery these are pictures of each wait i'm asking that here and now go back it's new here. york city it's okay. march 7. well partly it's taken to these very strange images that are behind your head right now <coughs> these are pictures of equations i've been for the last 15 years trying to answer the kinds of questions that my colleagues here have been raising and what i've come to understand is that there are these incredible pictures that contain all the information of a set of equations that are related to string theory and it's even more bizarre than that because when you then try to understand these pictures, you find out that buried in them are computer codes just like the type that you find in a browser when you go surf the web. And so I'm left with the puzzle of trying to figure out whether I live in the matrix or not. Wait, you're blowing my mind at this moment. So you're saying, are you saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers. That is correct. So, the wait, wait, I'm still, wait, I have to just be silent for a minute here. <laughs> so you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos? Into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. Computer code. Computer code. Strings of bits of ones and zeros. It's not just sort of resembles computer code. You're saying it is computer code. It's not even just is computer code. It's a special kind of computer code that was invented by a scientist named Claude Shannon in the 1940s. That's what we find very, very deeply inside the equations that occur in string theory and in general in systems that we say are supersymmetric. Okay. <laughs> Time to go home, I think. I'm, I'm, where are we going to go? Ahead? So, so are you saying we are all just, there's some entity that programmed the universe? So, this is actually quite interesting, but it's not unique. I mean, ever since scientists have started looking into things like quantum physics, they have found discoveries that have turned their understanding of the universe completely on its head. And there is something known as the simulation hypothesis. It is the idea that our whole entire universe in which we experience is actually nothing but an illusion, a simulated reality perhaps created on a computer or something else. Here, if I'm going on Wikipedia and we're reading about the simulation hypothesis, it says, the simulation hypothesis uh, proposed that reality is in fact sim uh, a simulation, most likely a computer simulation, or but it could be done on something else. Some versions rely on development of a simulated reality, a proposed technology that would seem realistic enough to convince its inhabitants the hypothesis that the hypothesis has been a central plot device of many science fiction stories and films and probably a 
a popular one that you know is the matrix. Now, this was an idea that wasn't taken seriously by physicists up until recently. Now, they are actually beginning to look into this idea. Some of the uh, top physicists are beginning to consider and actually question, well, are we actually living in a matrix? Is this world that we touch and feel, is it actually there? Now, and it all, and this video is actually going to be a, um, is actually going to be one of many videos in which I'm going to be discussing some of the new evidence that scientists have been finding for this idea of the simulation hypothesis and how things such as quantum physics has been turning our common understanding of reality just completely on its head. Uh, so I want to discuss the idea of naturalism uh, and naturalism, physicalism, and materialism. Now, naturalism is the idea that, um, here it says, in philosophy, naturalism is the idea or belief that only natural, as a, sorry, got a hiccup there, only natural as opposed to supernatural spiritual laws and forces operate in the world. But now, furthermore, it is the idea that everything is physical and material and that the universe can be understood through physical stuff and the interactions between that those material components so this worldview doesn't believe in a kind of a spirit realm or anything that's out there and it says that matter is the ultimate thing that creates reality and abstract things such as consciousness or emotions can be explained uh through matter, just like your computer has information and it thinks stuff, right? And there are things that appear on your computer screen, but the information is all created through physical components. And the idea of materialism is stuff like your consciousness doesn't necessarily need to be created through a soul or a spirit. Everything uh, is created through material, physical objects. Now, what is interesting about this worldview when we compare it to some of the things discovered in quantum physics, and I'm just going to mention the uh, specific, you know, video we've been talking about. Uh, this person, uh, James Gates, who discovered lines of computer code in the fundamental, uh, fundamental equations to describe the universe, it conflicts with the idea of, well, one of the ideas of naturalism or the other similar philosophy, physicalism. And this idea is that every, the whole entire universe is created by physical things. What it actually shows is that when we actually dig deeper into the fabric of reality, we don't find physical matter, but rather the physical things that we experience is created by information, bits of ones and zeros. And this isn't the only um, thing that has discovered this to be true. I mean, James Gates, what he's presenting here isn't exactly new because if you study quantum physics, something that quantum physics says is that the ultimate uh, basis of reality is information and that uh, matter, discrete concrete matter doesn't exist until there's information to define it. For example, let's take an electron. Do you know that an electron behaves very different from object? In fact, if we are going to the subatomic level to particles, tiny particles, they're extremely small, are ones that you are unable to see with your physical eyes. These tiny bits of matter do not behave like physical uh, like physical bits of matter that we can see for example um you as a person you cannot be in multiple places at once you are right now sitting here listening to this video whether it be in your bedroom or in the sitting room or whatever but if you were an electron you would be in multiple places you would be here sitting in your you would be in all the possible places you could be uh, whether it be in your bedroom, the kitchen, the lounge, all of those places simultaneously until a measurement is made or we try to define your exact location, then you would go to being in 
one exact position and this might sound absolutely crazy but this is actually modern science modern science says that um, the more smaller uh, like the more we go into small uh, bits of matter the less concrete they become and instead of being like a concrete bit of matter that has a physical location in time its ultimate reality starts becoming a little bit more blurred okay so I just temporarily stopped the recording because I wanted to open up this specific YouTube video I just want to say that anyone who wants to understand or look deep into what I was talking about I recommend you watch this it's very good and um, explains it quite well basically our reality that we think is concrete or matter if we let's say I were to have a block of wood and I were to break that wood in half I would have a smaller piece and if I were to break that piece in half again there would be an even smaller piece and if I kept on doing that I would eventually get to an atom which is one of the most smallest bits of matter but then there are even smaller pieces like electrons or photons but then as I said this is where it starts getting interesting because once we start getting into the very small scale of reality physical discrete concrete matter as described in physicalism doesn't exist in fact the matter becomes more blurred it becomes a vague waveform of possibility until there's information to define how it should behave an electron can spin in two directions at once and have multiple places until there's actually information to tell the electron exactly what location should it occupy so that's actually quite interesting it shows that uh, the ultimate basis of reality is information because everything in the universe is made up of these small components and these small components do not exist do not properly exist unless they have data and information to define them so and you often hear physicists talking about uh, data and information and w as affecting physical matter so I want to do a series of videos discussing this in more depth and going into the simulation hypothesis but also I want to talk about how it relates to many uh, ancient cultures around the world and what they spoke about you actually find uh, huge parallels in things that are being discovered by modern science and uh, ancient myths across the globe you know uh, one example is the Gnostic Christians who believe that this whole reality the re physical world in which we see was an illusion created by a false kind of God but anyways I'll talk about that in future videos um, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up and share. Thank you.